Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. In research methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our class today. In our previous lesson, we have introduced the research proposal. We have discussed the definition of research proposal, the importance of writing a research proposal, and the structure of a research proposal. In this lesson, we are going to list the components of chapter one of the research proposal and discuss section 1.1 and section 1.2. Remember, we have said that a research proposal has got four main sections and the four are preliminary pages which are paginated using Roman numbering. Then we have the main body which has chapter 1, 2 and 3. Then we have the references, which is a list of all the materials that we have referred to and quoted in our text. And then we have appendices. All that is numbered using Arabic numbering. So when we talk about subsection 1.1 and 1.2, we are talking about the sections in chapter 1, and it is the section 1 and section 2. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the main sections of chapter 1 of the research proposal and then explain section 1.1 and 1.2 of chapter 1 of the research proposal. Again, remember, we may differ in our structure based on your discipline, but what we are going to discuss, I am sure you will need it as you develop your research proposal. So let us first look at the sections of chapter 1 of the research proposal. Chapter 1 has got 12 subsections. But this 12 is when each and every section is listed. 1.1 is background to the study. And it is not background of the study. Background to the study, then statement of the problem, purpose of the study, objectives of the study, research questions, hypothesis, significance of the study, delimitations of the study, some will call it scope, limitations of the study, assumptions of the study, definition of significant terms, and organization of the study. Now, these sections may look more than what you may be familiar with because we have listed objective research questions and hypotheses together. Some institutions will only have research questions and hypotheses. Others will only have objectives and hypotheses. Others may have the three. So that is why we have listed all the sections that may be appropriate in chapter one. Other institutions have the purpose of the study as the general objective of the study and then delimitations as the scope and some may even bring the conceptual framework in chapter one. So that is why we are saying please follow your discipline but the components and their explanation are done in this lecture. So we start with the background to the study. Background to the study serves as the basis of introducing the problem to the reader. 
The primary goal of the background is to catch the attention and interest of the reader by giving a historical overview of the phenomena under study. Note that when we say the phenomena under study, we are talking about the variables of the study because that is what comprises of the phenomena. Background, therefore, involves reviewing literature which is related to the topic under investigation or which is related to the variables under investigation as a way of establishing that a relationship exists between the problem being investigated and the larger area of concern to people. Now, note that the problem that you are discussing at the background or the problem you want to investigate, many people have written about it. But there is something special about your problem which we are going to discuss under section 1.2. And as you discuss your background, you are showing the reader that there exists a relationship between what you want to study and the concerns of the people. Even the literature that you are reviewing has written what you want to investigate. Now, as you review the literature, it should cover global, then regional, then the local perspective. And ensure that the materials that you are reviewing literature from are current. Unless you are referring to a classical material, the books, the materials that you use should not be more than 10 years old, especially in social sciences. So now, after writing your background, the next step, which is 1.2, is to state the problem. This is the section that defines the issue of concern more clearly. It is actually the section that describes the issues or the factors that make the stated problem a critical issue to warrant the study. Remember, in the background, you have given your reader the historical perspective or the historical overview of the problem. You now narrow it down to tell the reader, why do you need to go to the field, use your money and time to investigate that problem? Yet, as you discussed the background, you have shown that many other people have written about it. Why would you need to go to the field? That now is made clear at the statement of the problem. Statement of the problem should have three critical information. The first one is the statement of social need. This is the paragraph where the researcher shows that there is social need that the study intends to address and it only requires research. In this section, the researcher describes the prevailing social conditions that have raised concerns that have led you to consider this as a problem worthy investigating. A good way of stating the statement of social need is to base the need on government or institutional or statistical data. Remember we keep saying that research is anchored on data. It is not based on hearsay. And because we are social sciences, we are going to the field to solve a social problem. Therefore, as you state your problem, the first paragraph should show the need. That is what we call the statement of social need. And in this statement, you are telling the reader that there is a social problem that I need to address and it can only be solved using research. And when you read this paragraph, you will be able to capture or be able to identify the need. This researcher wanted to compare the academic performance between the distance learning students and the on-campus students. But when you read literature, many people question the credibility of offering a, a science subject using a distance learning method. That has been documented. So you can see you are catching the attention of the reader that when you read literature, many authors or many researchers are questioning the credibility of distance learning and especially when it has to be offered to a science subject. Then 
why would I need to go out and investigate? That is what the statement of social need is all about. The second statement or the second paragraph is the statement of knowledge gap. And this is where many students have a problem. At the statement of knowledge gap, it does not mean that you identify the gap by stating that the author you have read or the person you have quoted did not do A, B, C, D or stating that there is no literature on your area of concern, then how did you write the background? How will you do the literature review if there is no literature to support your problem? By identifying the knowledge gap, you are saying that many people have done this, but they have left out the area that your problem is coming to identify. There seems to be no sufficient answer to the problem that you are investigating. So how do you identify the knowledge gap? You identify the knowledge gap by looking at the methods that the person you have reviewed their literature have used and what you want to use. For instance, the person may have used only survey in their study, but you want to use mixed method. Now, that is a knowledge gap, but you don't leave it at stating that the current study will use mixed method. You need to give the reason why you feel that mixed method would be the best method, better than the survey that had been used by the material that you have referred to. The other one is the context. The books or the materials that you have referred to may have been used in the first world. But for you, you want to conduct your study in a third world country. That context, therefore, is one way in which you identify the study, you identify the research problem. The variables identified in the previous study, probably you have brought in a new variable that you would want to study in the current study. And why have you added? The other one is conflicting findings. If we use the example of the differences between the academic performance of distance and on-campus on students, there are some findings that you state that there is no difference between the academic performance. Others are stating there is a difference. So when you look at the two, then there is conflicting. So that is why you would want to go to the field and be able to identify what is the situation like as far as the problem you have identified is concerned. The other one could be groups that have been omitted. People who have been researching on your area have only been focusing on women, for instance. But they have left out men, they have left out the vulnerable groups. So your study may be coming in with vulnerable groups and there is a reason why you have the vulnerable groups. So that is how you identify the knowledge gap. So please do not force the author of the work you are referring to to do your study. You find students mentioning that they did not look at the influence of X on Y, yet that is the study that you want to do. So it is looking at their studies vis-a-vis -vis the methods you are using, your context, the, your variables, their findings, and identifying the knowledge gap. So after you have identified the knowledge gap, that's why we are saying show how your study addresses those gaps and how it is unique and it will make unique contribution. And you'll be able to read this uh, statement of knowledge gap and this one captures the context. It is the context that brings out the knowledge gap as far as this order is concerned. And now once you have your statement of knowledge gap, you had earlier on written your statement of social need. You now write the statement of the main research question or what is called the researcher's in intuition. Now, you write a statement, which is the last paragraph, where you use the word therefore or hence the main research question or hence the problem of this research is like it is indicated in this paragraph. Now, what is the appropriate length of the statement of the problem? You find a student has 
two or three pages of the statement of the problem. Is that really a problem? And the answer is no. Because a lot of information in those two or three pages should be in the background or in the literature review. Ideally, the statement of the problem should only have those three paragraphs. And it therefore means it should be just half a page. If it goes beyond half a page, then let it not go beyond one page. Because you already gave the background, now you are telling the reader why the problem you have identified warrants investigation. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. In this lesson, we have listed the 12 sections of chapter 1 and we have gone further to discuss section 1.1 which is background to the study which we have said it is the historical overview of your phenomena and in this case the phenomena refers to the variables and we have also talked about the statement of the problem. This statement is an area where many students have a problem because they want to repeat the background in the statement of the problem. In our next section, we are going to discuss section 1.3, which is purpose of the study, and 1.4, which is objectives of the study. But before then, make sure you visit the researchmethodsclass.com website where you can watch the full research methods course. You can also access other courses on SPSS and M&A consultancy. You are also able to book for consultation and you can also buy the research methods ebook. So see you in our next lesson as we talk about section 1.3 which is purpose of the study and 1.4 which is objectives of the study.